Hello guys, in previous session we finished with having sign in and sign up form and they work and they display some error message but error message is not the human friendly and we need to validate it properly so let's do it today first of all I want to introduce our special guest as Zod library this is a fancy library these days that every cool kid should use they say uh, so let's check it out. I haven't used it before, so I will learn together with you in this session, but the library seems to be quite simple, so let's start. First of all, it's very lightweight and blah blah blah, and uh, we can define schemas with that, and it also provides us types, so I think we can use it on both front end and back end, which is nice. So let's install it first. Let's go to some terminal that's free, clean it and uh, install. Okay, we're not in Dana land, and this is how we can use it. Okay, I suggest we uh, so we have client and server folders in the lib. I suggest we make one more folder which we'll call shared. And inside we'll have uh, models uh, where we will define all the our schemas and types. And one of the models will be just AUV, where we will import Zod. And let's figure out. Oh, okay. Um, thank you, GitHub Copilot. Um, I hope I will be helpful here in this video, not just you. So let's figure out what it done. Uh, it defines some schema for object with email and password properties. Email is a string and uh, exact string type of email. Password is also a string with minimum eight symbols. This is good. I guess this is how we can uh, define objects and we can also define primitives like strings and then we can parse something and they also have a uh, parse that throws an error and also parse that uh, just fails uh, not fails return an object that has success property true or false and data either error property Okay, we'll figure out which one we want to use. And also we can extract the type. So let's uh, export type of. Nice. I like. So GitHub Copilot seems to know this library well, which is cool. Uh, let's define alias for our new shared folder. So that will be shared and yep, that is good enough. In our models, oh, uh, let's define index.ts where we'll re-export everything from auf. So our import paths are short and nice. So schema we'll use for validation, but the type itself we'll use for typing things. Uh, so let's see. First of all, we need to integrate it on the back end where we validate the input. So in previous session, we defined this simple validation uh, for sign up. Let's replace it with Zod. So first of all, we import our schema and uh, we need to use parse. So we'll parse message data and we should get our AUF object const. And AUF object should be of this type of email and password. And if anything does not fit this schema, it should throw an error that is catched here. Also we can check if it is Zod error, instance of Zod error, 
uh, we shouldn't console log it because like why it's validation it's not a backend error of us so if error instance and of zod error i believe we can import this type of uh, error mm -hmm. so in case of validation we will return the message as it is let's import it can we is a zod error a thing we can get uh, let's see was it a zod yeah okay it is here mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. nice um actually let's console log it for a second i want to know what's inside how does it look like so but if it is not validation error i want to console error it and to just return some unknown error or server error yeah that would be fair so we don't expose any uh, sensitive data about our server nice okay uh let's see how it works so at this mom point uh our message data should be um, already validated and we can use it here so let's replace message data with alf object and that is it oh we already find uh, alf object i think we have our own alf object already so uh, let's call it payload like a message payload nice okay let's see so it's for sign up and we got an error let's see what it is let's close extra terminals I don't need all of them now cannot find package lib oh okay uh, Something is wrong with our aliases, shared, shared models. Uh, let me restart the server. It might be just we need to restart it. Not find package shared models import. Mm -hmm. so let's see um, is it any different from components alias no not like I see um, maybe we can say just models and that way it will be correct hmm no, for some reason not. But why? Oh, let's check it out. So the way we do exports is the same as everywhere else. Um, what we export is not that different also this is server side and uh, did we use aliases on the server side before it worked on the client side with the component mm -hmm. I 
think we haven't used it. Yeah. Okay. It might be that SwellKit limits our import inside server folder to only be able to import stuff from also server folder. So we cannot include client stuff, I guess. Or maybe it's, it was the opposite, like client stuff cannot import stuff from server side because it, it's not um, secure. But also this is more like TypeScript error rather than SwellKit. So I'm a little bit confused. Can we try just to use lib shared models? Will it work? And I might figure out later Yeah, it, it all screwed for some reason, and even dollar $lib doesn't work. Hmm. What if I comment it all out? And uh, will it compile then? Yeah, it does. But it is not very helpful <laughs> if we don't have the code. Mm hmm what about the Zod error? Will that compile well? Yeah, it seems like it does. Okay, so back to our schema. Find package leave imported from white or oh, with config. Hmm. Yep, that never happened to me before. What can we do? We can Google it, like, first of all, let's try to use add models. Uh, let's try, oops, sorry. Let's try to run npm check and we'll see if Anything related to this import is not valid. By the way, I think it's time to clean up this check so we don't see this client side errors. Yeah, we will do it in the next uh, cleanup session, I think. But I, I don't see any, any errors related to this import. Um, what else can we do? So there are some additional comments in package.json related to Svelte. Uh, let's see, it. so first of all, let's try build. It probably should fail because of this import, yes. Okay, what else? Dev we tried, preview won't help. Lint format. Well, lint also won't be very helpful, it won't fix it. Yeah, so okay, Google time. Swelled kit alias doesn't work. We might also ask ChatGPT. Mm -hmm -hmm. looks like some old style of writing that but yeah nine months ago I think Swelt Kit changed a lot of since then let's check the official docs let me make it bigger so alias up to my directory. Uh -huh. I haven't used this thing before. Uh, we can try that one. 
Yep, that's it. No more interesting information here that might help us, I think. Hmm. Maybe models is some reserved word. I don't know. Uh, let's try to change it to something else, just in case. So instead of models, let's call it shared and shared. And let's move the file out of models folder. Yep, I want all the stuff to change. Pops. So we say dollar shared flash out. Oh no, not lint. Sorry, um, dev. Hmm. Mm -hmm -hmm. Okay, one more idea that I have is that this v or WSS file is a little bit outside of Svelte Kit context. So we run it uh, just by configuring where uh, vid config. Here we have WSS plugin and probably it doesn't know about Svelte Kit aliases. Yeah. Okay, what about we'll just remove it where it was. Okay. Uh, we'll keep alias just in case we import it on the front end. So models, models. Okay. And we will use relative syntax here. Mm -hmm. No, we need to write it ourselves. Okay, back, back, shared model self. Or just shared models will work too. Okay, let's try to run it now again. And I don't see the error. Nice. So let's see if the whole thing will work. So nice we got some error wonderful so one thing to keep in mind is that this wss is not swelled kit it's just node.js server and yes it is compiled by vid but it is separate from swelled kit so we don't have access to aliases here and probably other swelled kit stuff and I was confused with this server folder and uh, that's why it didn't work. Well, this is important to keep in mind. Uh, later on, I think we will migrate to some mono repo like NX or uh, Turbo repo. And there we will be able to use aliases and uh, packages and we'll get back to this absolute paths instead of this relative paths. But for now that should work. Okay, so what have we got back? So we got validation error and in the terminal we should see it a little bit nicer. So this is dot error. I think there should be some so dot error is an array, not an object. Oh, this is surprising. I would expect it to have dot message inside. Um, but I think there should be wait in Zod to generate some human friendly um, string out of our validation thing. Mm, let's see the docs. Guides and concepts. Okay. Some transformations. Uh, 
error handling oh yeah this is what we need so result success this is for save parse we use just regular parse error issues okay issues here we are issues and errors is it the same thing it looks similar and what do we have on the front end it's just an array of either issues is the errors I don't know okay formatting result error format name errors expected string received number oh cool so we can try to format the error and it will give us a little bit nicer JSON or we can return it as it is and parse it on the front end to display some better error so since our form is quite simple I'd prefer it to have simple error format <laughs> Okay, let's see, let's see, let's try. We need to experiment a little bit. So both our email field and uh, our password field are incorrect. Yeah, what about we just parse it on the front end? We have it pretty uh, nicely uh, formatted already. So one is email, another one is where is the password? <laughs> format. Yeah, let's try to format it as well before we return it to the front end and we'll try again. Mm -hmm. Where it was? Here. Error. Oops format is it correct correct and we got nothing back why is it Object, object. Here is our data. So for each field, email and password, we have underscore errors, which is array of strings. Nice, that's what we need. So let's, uh, yep, let's do it in the, <laughs> so, sorry. So here we expect it to be a string but actually what we can do instead is to check if data has email or password and under each field we will uh, display each error so let's go to our component so we do it for both sign in and sign up and uh, here under it we can say if store error is um, it should have email if it has email then we'll display email dot underscore errors okay the reason why it highlights an error here is because error is a string in our type and let's change it to any for now and the same here for password password otherwise we'll just display error and we can stringify it okay Uh, 
we should add this thing here to make it optional. Mm -hmm. Submit invalid email string must must contain at least eight characters. Wonderful, and we got the JSON back. So now we can type it. So how do we type it for uh, for our case? So we have this shared model, and I guess we can also export error type out of it, right? Can we? Because it should be somewhere there. If we look at this dot format, what is return type? Error string array. Well, it's definitely not string array. It is zod format error. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's check it here. Zod error form integration. Hey, we just need types. Zod is all about types, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm. Hmm. Okay, so we expect it to have our error typed. Hmm. Let's try to get something out of this schema. Export type auf error. I know if it's possible, but I'm eager to figure out. Hmm. -hmm, -hmm. Or is it like dot error? Oops. Zod error. Zod formatted error for T. error and it is not exported is type and must be imported ah okay it is exported just need to add type for it so let's see auf error can we look into it error string and what the hell is that Okay, if we make a constant out of it, what will be inside? Uh, what if it's of this type? Error string. No. No. Aha, uh -huh. here we are. So this looks like a correct uh, type for it. So it might be email or password with underscore errors. And also it can be underscore errors on the root level. Okay, this is cool. So this is what we need. So we will export this thing. Nice. And uh, here we will say in our auf store that it is now typed. It's auf error. Need to import it from models. 
here import should work uh, let's just restart our server which died why does it die I'm guessing okay and now when we try to uh, display it we have all the type support we need mm -hmm. and also we can display if error has underscore errors then we can display them just like that and I guess this might be some general type of error not related to email or password uh, but I don't know yet uh, let's try it out so invalid email yep let's change it to user5 uh, let's leave password empty yep okay just from 1 to 8 submit success wow nice okay and that should work for sign-in as well the problem is my password for this user is four symbols long so it won't work oh wait it worked because we only uh, use this schema for sign up but not for sign in we have to use it here too okay and our code for error handling became repetitive too so i think next session would be about refactoring it refactoring it a lot but step by step okay so we use it here oops sorry let's return this so let's create a new user with a proper eight symbols length password uh, let's just call it new.test.com from one to eight sign up sign out and try sign in so our old one won't work because it's too short but our new one should work yes it works nice so this way we typed our errors and we can now have human friendly errors which is fine so let me make myself bigger for the outro in the next session we will refactor our code a little bit here and uh, extract some repetitive code i think also there will be future sessions where we will add um, validation for this links add stuff so our links are also type safe and thank you for your attention. See you in the next one.